All right, all right. Today we got someone, someone, well, not just someone, someone that needs no introduction. But you know, I got to give him his flowers. Anyway, this man has done it all, serving with honor, pushing past his limits, has been an inspiration to those around him, myself included, both in the Air Force and in his life. When I think of resilience, leadership, and integrity, one name comes to mind, Michael J. Scott. He's not just a good friend from our time at Barksdale Air Force Base, but a man who embodies what it means to be committed both to his family and his profession. So sit back, relax, and get ready for a conversation that's going to be full of laughs, lessons, and some straight up wisdom. Mike, welcome to Zenyoku, man. It's great to have you. Hey, truly the, the, the honor and it's, it's a privilege to be here on the channel, man. As you mentioned, we are, we, you know, we, we go back on our relationship on Barca Air Force Base. Uh, but I think it goes more than that, man. I think we were just always meant to be and destined to be. Uh, for as we, we were joking a little bit earlier about, you know, I said you're my mentor. And you're like, man, you're my mentor. But th this relationship is, is uh, the dynamic here, man, is amazing. And I'm, I'm more than grateful to be here. And I, and I really am. I appreciate it, uh, that you're oh, allowing me on your, on your show, man. So thank you. Thank you for letting yeah. me be here. You say we got this bro romance, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know. It's a little romance. It's just a little bit. Yeah, you know, so you give yeah, me flowers, yeah, yeah. man. I'll get you the candy. I got you the chocolates. It's good. <laughs> so uh, let me ask the first question. So first off, you know, I got to ask this, you know, what's your favorite anime and how has it impacted your, your professional and personal growth? Oh man, man, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of animes out there and yep, I, I grew up is. heavy on them back in the day. You know, the, the Toonami kids out there know what I'm talking about, the Cartoon Network Toonami days. Mm -hmm. um, but, but truly, man, and I know most people frown on it nowadays, but Dragon Ball Z is is one of my classics. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Grew up on it, watching uh, watching Goku scream for an episode and a half, you know. <laughs> you know? And it's just, man, like, man, that yeah. resilience that he could scream for an episode and a half and never even transform yet is uh, yeah. amazing. But, you know, the struggles, man, just seeing the challenges, the struggles, that teamwork that they always worked. I mean, you could relay a lot of things from anime or even different cartoons and shows uh, to mm -hmm. your daily life. But, man, that's one of them is Dragon Ball Z. That's kind of why I got the thing. But here's from a uh, shout out to Ruben Dante. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. a donation to him, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, I like that, man. Yeah. So you mentioned Dragon Ball Z before, so I know that's like, you know, big to you. When Goku and the crew, you know, are down, do you find it like with that second win, it, that kind of resilience, does it speak to you as in your leadership style? It does, because, I mean, if you look at, just look at the show. Anybody does watch the show Dragon Ball Z or any of that, and they, they see them, all right? The, the, the heroes are down, right? Like, just like you said. And they're like almost defeated. It's something in them that you start to see them reflect a little bit on their past, right? You start seeing those those uh, screen captures of the old episodes or whatever it is, and, and but you see the support in there too. Hey, you mm -hmm. got this. You can do this. We believe in you, right? Stuff like that starts to echo through their mind, and all of a sudden, they, you know, boom! Now they got that second win. They go back out there. They capture the win uh, every time, just because the way it's yeah. written, of course. You know, but it does. You know, it inspires you, right? <laughs> yeah, that that that's so true. Like, man, Goku is amazing like that, but it. But it's funny, and I you know I kind of noticed it, you know, too early. That's why I kind of started the show because you know I love anime, I love cartoons and different things like that. But right. I noticed like how the writers and producers produce it. They always talk about resilience. They always talk about getting up. They all every protagonist has such a terrible backstory where they yeah. should be like heartened by life, right? But they choose to do something good with themselves. They choose, and and sometimes that's very difficult. You know, I have family members. Well, it's, it's quite hard for them to choose to do the right thing. And so I do empathize, right? right? But it's a choice to do something with yourself. So, man, I, man, I get it. I get it. Yeah, so, you, and if you don't mind, if, you, if I can echo on something right there, you just yeah. kind of spark my mind or something. So if you think about, we go back to, the, we're talking about anime here, I'm talking about Dragon Ball Z, but even when Goku fights his enemies, right? At the end of the day, what does he always try to do at the end? Instead of just constantly destroying them or surpassing them, he gives them always a chance, a, hand, a reaching hand out, Okay, hey, let, let's work this together now. Let's be friends. Let's let's find a way to grow together. I think that's important. If, we, if we're going to reflect back, especially talk about our daily lives and military lives, how many times are we in a peer competitive agency, right? The United States Air Force with, with, from, with promotions, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Especially if you're, you're your ranks. Sometimes you want to surpass that person. Maybe that bully, that the bully other tech sergeant or the other bully staff sergeant. You're like, well, I'm, I'm, I'll promote them. Just think about how beneficial the Air Force could be. We're like, you know what? Let me mentor. Let me guide the same, my peer, and work together. And let's both grow together, right? Man, yeah. now you just made a huge, more bigger impact and bigger difference, and now you got another friend, right? Another mentor, another growth partner. Not always easy to do. I get that. Hey. 
but but the challenge, right? That's that's the whole yeah. point of what we're talking about today is those challenges and yeah. how to break those barriers. So just say, man, that, that kind of sparked me when you said that. Yeah, that is see, hundred percent true. You know, you've been through some serious challenges, man. And um, can you share a time where you faced something that really changed you? Maybe it's something that you know still sticks with you today. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, I have to think and think if you were there during those time frames. I think you were, or you might have yeah. showed up right afterwards. Uh, so this was at Barks Air Force Base, of course, and our this is a military life reflection that'll move on. Uh, but this really did help me grow in my career. Uh, as a young staff, right, we were out there doing some great things. We're on a deployment. Uh, and I, I'm a highly capable individual, right? I was a seven level. And also I had a IPI certification, which, you know, is an in-progress inspection inspection. So to be a seven level is a big deal. To get the IPI is even another big deal, right? If you go back and chart career field as a jet engine mechanic or any career field out there for my, that matter. Anyways, there was an inspection we were supposed to do, right? And we knew that what, what was required of it was a special tool. Uh, and we did not have that tool because we were trained. It was such heavy embedded into the culture that you really don't actually need that tool, right? Now, instead of I doing any I changes exactly to the technical order that we had to fix to do any of that, we didn't do any of that work that we should have done. We just said, okay, yeah, we just did our normal inspection. We made, I mean, not to say we were lazy. We really did make sure that thing was good by our visual and checking it that way. We just did not use this little tool. Uh, and of course, all that fell apart when we came back from our deployment. Uh, it was a big deal. And I got two choices from that commander at the time was uh, option A, you know, you take your gold belt off and hang it on my uh, coat rack here and you're out of the Air Force or option B, but you don't get to know what option B is. Obviously, I'm still in the United States Air Force, so we clearly know I chose option B. Um, but it was a big deal, man. He gave me he gave me my core values card. I actually still have it it's in my classroom. Uh, well, it's in my yeah. office, and when I go to my, I use it as a teaching tool. Um, but it's the core value placard card, and it just has the core values and the airman's in the back. And he said, you didn't care for them internally, right? So now you're going to care, care for your core values physically. And so he made me carry that card for six months, and, I, and he's like, it better come back to me in the same condition I gave it to you. Uh, or you're done, right? Another contract. We had to sign this whole contract. Uh, so I immediately went, got a plex, you know, got it wrapped. I don't know if you ever saw it. And I got a plexiglass, RTV, you know, and a, a sealant. And I kept that thing, you know, perfect. And it, I, it had to stay on my body for six months. If you ever saw me without it, I was in trouble. Um, and I had to return it to him. And when it was time to return it to him, I asked him if I could keep it. But just that that crazy moment, right, showed me, like, how toxic a culture can be. To even when I'm, a, you know, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm supposed to do. I can also read. Uh, what was what was supposed to be correct, and I didn't hold myself accountable at those times. And I allowed a lot of great things we did on that deployment to fall apart because all they focused on now was the was the mess up instead of all the yeah, hype. Yeah, thing, right? And so after yeah. that, man, my mindset on everything changed a lot because I realized, hey, as an NCO, what I do matters to the people below me. I cannot let them fall or fail the way I did. And so now, anything that I do in my career, I make sure that I pass on where I failed and make my missteps, so they don't have to. I'm like, I already did it. I already failed. Team, you don't got to yeah. fail. I already did it. Just learn from what I did. You get to go ahead and move on through your career a lot better than the way I did. So, that, man, it's just one of the many moments that truly just kind of changed my path to to be a better example for my team and, and hold myself a little bit more accountable uh, in that in that regard. It's a long story. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, no. I love that, man. Talk, hey, talk your talk, fam. Yeah, yeah man. It, 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 it all goes back to that one thing I heard years ago, and I still take it to me this day, to this day, even though it's kind of like... Uh, like an oxymoron, trust but verify. Oh man, you know what I'm saying? Like we say Go that ahead. a lot. You know what I'm saying? Especially out at everybody who's watching. Uh, you know, we are in the military, right? We in a maintenance culture, and so maintenance culture is a little different. Um, it's, it's it's three probably like three probably career fields that are really crazy. Um, one is special forces, two is security forces, and three is just maintainers. Uh, well, not career field, but culture, uh, culture wise, right? Communities okay. and maintainers. I'm not sure if you guys know are crazy. We ju we just we're a different breed, um, and we're called upon to do so, you know, because of the importance of our job, right? You know, we we are what, what's what's the thing that um, they said uh, pilots need heroes. So oh, pilots <laughs> need heroes too, man. They really do. It's a maintainer. Yeah. So. You know, like like he was saying, trust but verify. Like Mike was saying, trust but verify. It's such a big thing in the military. But, you know, a lot of people say, well, if you trust me, then why do you need to verify? Right? Yeah. But it's so important that you do so. So I, I you have man, the back. I, yeah. the day, that's the reason. It's because I have your back. I don't back want here. you to ever fail. Right? Yeah. Nothing wrong with a second pair of eyes. You know what? I got to ask you a question. Yeah. If you could be an anime character for one day, who would it be and why? 
I'm guessing Goku, Whoa. but I want to hear from you. That's a that's a good one. That's a so, good question. Man, any anime character, why? I would man, you know what? I would I would have to say I would have to say almost Vegeta though. I'd actually I gotta actually go Vegeta because his drive and his passion comes not from like trying to do this it's it's cause, cause competitive. That yeah. competitiveness though drives him to constantly be better. Yet he doesn't do it in a well, he used to. He in the beginning he did. <laughs> But he doesn't yeah, do it yeah, in yeah. a uh, in a I guess I'll say a distasteful way, as I said. Yeah. But uh, but he has all the same capabilities. as Goku can still fly. That's cool, right? Anybody ever wants to kind of fly sometimes? Uh, power up and charge, and uh, he's a short king, you know. And me as well, five seven. So you know, he got the he got the widow's peak. I still got some of my hair, you know. I'm not I'm not all the way there yet, but uh, I, mean, I don't know. I feel like maybe I I'll go with Vegeta just to have some of that drive. Because sometimes I don't have that competitiveness. Uh, a lot mm-hmm. of times, what I've known in my career. And this was told to me a lot, actually, by a lot of previous supervisors back in the day was the reason you fail so much, Sergeant Scott, or you don't get promoted is because you don't put yourself in for no awards. You don't put yourself in any of these things. Uh, but a lot of times I was like, hey, well, if I'm a tech, I'm taking away from my staff, right? Mm-hmm. Because we're in the same category. So how could I, as a, as the person in charge of our office or our section, put myself in over my team when half the time, whatever the team did is the reason we're so successful anyway. So it was hard for yeah. me to always get that mindset. But at least maybe if I had that mindset a little bit, Maybe my career would have progressed a little bit more faster. But you know what? I'm, I'm kind of actually happy the way I think I've done it. Uh, and took care of the team first. That's, that's normally yeah. what it's all about. No, you're 100% right. And, and, and man, I do the same thing. And, and, I, and it has happened to me a lot of times. Like, honestly, my supervisors had to tell me, order me, like, hey, you know, you need to write yourself a package this quarter. And I'm like, uh, oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> I, I'll get it done. But, you know, I'm thinking about my guys. And I know if I say, well, you know, I think, you know, what's his name deserves it. You know, he's going to be like, I told you to write. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, okay. So, yeah, I, man, trust me, I get you. I always like to take care of my guys first and then, you know, put myself on a back burner. But I'm learning that it has to be, um, what's it, balanced. But that is very difficult to have balance, um, you know, especially in what you're trying to do, man, because life is full of ups and downs and circles and rounds and it never goes in a straight line. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I get you. You know, you, you always big on integrity and, um, you know, and why do you think that is one of the most important qualities, you know, and uh, for yeah. success and what, what make you want to show that in your day to day life? I think just when you truly think about what integrity is, right? It's just doing what we always say, right? We say, oh man, it's doing what, what, uh, what is correct when no one's around. I think right. it's actually doing it what's correct when everybody's around, right? Yeah. Because that's when it matters the most. If nobody's around and I do something correct, that's great. But if I do what's correct when everybody's around, when it's a difficult choice, it's something so much bigger, so much more impactful for people to see that, right? To see that integrity. Uh, and I'm always transparent with that. Just like you said, I'm always transparent with like, hey, I, I expect the honest truth. I expect you to do what's right. Because when you tell me that you messed up, I can be there to help you and guide you that integrity. But if you try to cover it up and hide it, it's only going to f- make this whole team, whatever the effort is, it's going to fall apart that way. Right. Truly being upfront, integrity, doing what's right when everyone's around is such a big deal. Right. And if you do yeah. it right the first time, you know, I had to worry about it again. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. uh, but now it's a big deal. I think I think integrity is not one of those number ones. No, you, and you're right. And you know, and that brings me to my next question. You know, I, for what I've seen, you mentored a lot of people in your time, especially at Barksdale. And now, you know, with your job that you're doing right now as an instructor, but I don't really even see you as an instructor. I see you as a pivotal mentor, teacher, like I'll, I'll call you sensei, right? You know, well, what lessons have you, you know, uh, on integrity, you think people still struggle with, even after hearing it time, time again? and you know, you telling them and, and, and impressing upon them about things. It, uh, so one thing we were just talking about, trying to, if we're talking about the military and promotion rates, and all those kind of things, right? Uh, we mm-hmm. were talking about uh, embellishing your performance reports or, uh, well, now they're not performance reports, were they now? Uh, yeah, yeah. Performance uh, briefs, briefs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Briefs, performance yeah. briefs, right? Yeah. Uh, but if you don't, right, if you don't embellish a little bit, how do you, how do you maintain the same level as your peers, right? Because everybody knows that they're all doing it. So, when we challenge people, like, hey, you got to have the integrity, write what's correct, man. Find that data. Be that, that reporter. Go dig into the news a little bit. Dig into what you actually did. Find those bigger pictures. It's not always easy, right? Because it's always, well, I don't have the time, or how do I find this other data? Um, so it's just easier, right? It's just the easy thing to do for people to just say, well, man, you know what I did? Did walk by a blood donation the other day. And, you know, I did say hello. 
So, you know, as a matter of fact, you know, I, I might have connected some uh, out external uh, agency to the, you know what I mean? And yeah. uh, so sometimes I find people struggle with that. I find people struggling with the competitiveness of the United States Air Force when it comes to promotion. Uh, outside yeah. of that, though, I, I haven't seen too many people struggle with integrity as a whole. For the most part, most people want to do what's correct. They want to do what's right because what I'm seeing, and this is great. This is what I love seeing, especially like you just said, as being an instructor now, is I'm seeing the Air Force is changing. I am seeing these new leaders taking over, and they're not, they're not the ones we had. They're not those ones that used to beat us down. Uh, they didn't never give us the why, right? They didn't give any of this. These individuals are trying. They're trying to move with the new culture. They're trying to move with the new airmen coming in. And they're they're reaching out with open arms. And they're like, hey, man, I got you. Here, here's what right looks like. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the first step forward anyway. These are true leaders coming into our airports. And it's amazing to see. Right? And you yeah. get some onesies and twosies. Maybe they had some yeah, of the old yeah. school mentality. And I get it. Yeah, you're right. But, uh, but it's something cool, man. It's, it's, it's something amazing to see. Most people do lead with integrity. It's just that that hard part. Like I said, it's the competitiveness of our of our promotion that just the Air Force needs to find that that sweet sauce, man. Figure figure another way out, maybe. Maybe boards, like physical boards. Yeah. 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 Like we, you're actually going to it. And that, I think that'd probably be scary for some people. But I, but you know, you did mention something I it really caught me. You like these new leaders that are coming in, right? You know, yeah. um the the same generation as us, you know, millennials and then also generations after us that's promoting quickly and stuff like that. Do you think with the promotion, not promotion rates, but uh, I would say the individuals that's coming in right now, uh, you see it all the time. Like the Air Force cannot make its mark when it comes to recruiting. Uh, the Navy's having problems. The Army's having problems. Uh, do you think it's a a issue when it comes to our social media, how the military is kind of portrayed as a business versus a community? Or do you think um, do you think it's something else externally happened? Uh, what, I, what I'm kind of reflect on is, is externally. I think uh, is when we're talking about social media and everything that the Air Force does do or military as a whole, public affairs team's got it nailed down. Man, yeah. they, they, they are impressive with some of the things they can do. And I think they really do push out social media for the positive, right? Because it yeah. can be weaponized. Everybody knows social media it can be weaponized uh, by terrorist groups or whoever wants to use it, right? But I think ours does it for a positive effect. But I think it's something external, man. I think it's people can literally look it up right now. You can look at competitive, competitive rates of, of pay, uh, benefits and civilian sectors are matching, if not beating, what the military is providing on, on, like on a one to one basis constantly. So why would someone want to come and volunteer and like, well, I got to go to base and get yelled at. I got to constantly conform to standards. I got to do all this other craziness. I'm going to have to yeah. deploy to a war I might, I might not want nothing to do with. Or I could just go work for, uh, SpaceX or I could just go work for Amazon or, you know, I could go work for Tesla and do these same things with my same skill set. I'm going to get paid a lot more money. Because, yeah. like, as a matter of fact, you know, well, you might be hitting on something. It might be the social media influence on the civilian sector that's kind of changing the narrative for most of our most of our people because they see the flashy lifestyles, right? Why yeah, join the military when I could just I could come and be a YouTuber or I can go on Snapchat, you know, and and do my thing real quick and, and you know do my sponsors and be like, all right, cool, I'm out. That's true, and, and then live that life, right? So I think that might be some of the difficult challenges is, is trying to bring that that pride back to serving. And unfortunately, uh, what we saw last time, right, the big influx when we did finally have that big surge was 9-11. Right? It took something yeah. super bad, right, a horrible yeah. tragedy for people to be like, oh, my God, yeah, no, we're all Americans. There's no more left. There's no more right. We're Americans. Right. Yeah. And, and, no, you know, we're going to stand up. And we saw a huge surge. And now we don't have any of that. And I would hate to say um, probably something in the future if we have any kind of high conflict. Maybe we'll see it again. But I hope people we can get that before that, right, before anything right. Like that can ever happen. So, interesting. Interesting question. Hmm. I like that, man. You know, you made me think about that. You know, you mentioned once that you, you, you know, how you made rank, right? And how you was ready to, you know, walk away from your uniform. You know, I, I cause, and these right. are personal conversations, but you had it openly uh, with other people, I, you yeah. know, I've been there. You know, how did, how did that make you feel? And what was you going through in your mind at that moment? And how did it affect you outwardly moving forward? Oh man, it's a big deal. Uh, so it, a lot of it attributes to, you know, my supervision, this team here, the, the leadership I had. Matt Sarbanello was one of the, the main ones. When I first got here, I had a conversation with him and I said, Hey, just then you know, I only got these many years left. I'm on my way out, man. Don't worry about trying to develop me. I don't want none of that stuff. Uh, I'm good. I did that. I was like, I literally just came from a superintendent role. They didn't even give me the name, the title. I get that. They just, they put me down to a different thing. They try to hide the fact I did these things, right? They just, I was like, I, I'm just done with that life. I'm done with trying so hard and putting my family uh, on the back burner 
to, to get this rank. I don't even care anymore. Don't even worry about it, man. I'm good. Just let me be an instructor and I'm good. And uh, he pushed me, man. He could tell you, he, he was underhanded sometimes. He tricked me. He tricked me. He's very tricky because he knows I can't say no a lot. He knows I'm, I'm really bad at saying no. Uh, but he was like, hey, man, you, you'd be interested in doing this one thing or doing this one thing. And he kept pushing me. And, and without me asking, he would put me in for awards, something I've never seen before, right? Uh, you know, from yeah. our career field, right? He did it on his own. He didn't ask me. He just said, hey, tell me a story. So it's pretty amazing, man. And uh, so I promised him because I know he spent many nights and hours working on those things, right? Away from his family to develop me. I said, hey, man, if I make it, uh, I promise you I'll give you that year. I'll give you that additional that time frame, right? That service commitment. I'm going to put it in there. And of course, my wife was like, absolutely. You're going to stay in. What are you talking about, right? Uh, and I was trying to get out for her. I'm trying to get out so she can go live her life. I want her to live her life, her dreams. Uh, so many times her career has been on hold, man, for me, right? And I was like, this is your time now. I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm, man, I'm going to get this house clean. The laundry's going to be folded. I got you. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, since she found out I made, she's like, uh-uh, we staying in, baby. She's like, we we, we, we going the distance now. So, but that moment, yeah. man, when they when they surprised me, man, and this was my current supervisor, Sarn Powell, really helped, and uh, another individual, Sarn Brewer, went out there, found out, like, they made multiple calls because we're in a guard base, right, small unit, so they don't really have the access as immediately as most of the activities. But they made multiple phone calls, found a connect. Uh, ran to the shop, got the ring, and then they told the commander, got everybody set up while we're out there getting ready to do a PT session. Uh, uh, I think it was a commandant's challenge, matter of fact, for our school, for uh, the NCUA class. And they came out there, and I, you know, I was in the background trying to get ready for this thing, this event. And I hear them call my name out there, and I was like, what the cool? What do I do? Yeah, I ain't do anything. Uh, and, you know, it really was out of my mind because I was like, man, because I figured they would already mention it like a couple of days before, right? Uh, and mm-hmm. man, it was a big, it was a big deal, it was a big effort. And something I, th- I never thought I would achieve, I mentioned while I was out there. It, you know, it was, it was my passion to make that ring because it's what my dad retired as uh, when he got, you know, when he was fed up with the army. He's like, all right, I'm done with the army. I'm out. You know, and I was like, man, I really want to make, make that goal. And I was but man, I convinced myself, like you said, the conversation we had, I convinced myself that I was just done. I was like, hey, man, I'm good. You know what? I'm good. I, I have accepted that I will retire as a tech. And that's OK. Right. As long as I can continue to give back to the team and, and help other people grow. Man, that's what mm-hmm. it's all about. So to get that moment, it. Man, it really did. It changed my trajectory here, uh, and it showed me that I, man, I got I got a little bit more to give, right? A little bit more to give to the team, uh, and support these, like you said, these new leaders coming in with these new desires, the ones that are coming in, uh, and continue to help them grow, man. So that's a uh, it's a big deal. I, I saw one officially uh, October first, so that'd be yeah. I won't be at work yet. I don't go back to work because, like I said, I got the knee surgery, so I'm on that convalescent. But uh, October seventh is my official day supposed to be back, but uh, I have a promotion say right on the fourth on that Friday. I'm going to kind of sneak in on the fourth and get that done. So it'll be pretty cool, man. It's, it's going to be a pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah it is a big deal. When, <laughs> when I found out you made it, bro, I was punching the wall like, I was like and then I, I hit you if I called you. I said, Let's go. I was too excited. And my wife was like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, I like Mike made it. She's like, oh, for real? She's like, tell him what I said. You know what's up? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that yeah, old yeah, dinosaur like, finally, uh, they yeah, finally, yeah, finally made here. it. Tell yeah. you, man, it's a typical Air Force. They were like, oh, wait, he's about to get out. Why don't you just slide him this little rank real quick and let's see what he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's tease him a little bit. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, it's, it's a good feeling, man. It really is. A, it's an honor. I got I'm to go to that dead. senior CEO induction ceremony down in Maxwell. Thanks once again. I got a great team here, man. They allowed me to go do that uh, down there. Go for a little TDY. And uh, it was pretty cool to be part of that. To see the growth of what it really means to be a senior NCO. And, man, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best to just try to earn it. And then, uh, and then bow out respectfully again. You know, we'll try again to, to bow out respectfully. So we'll see. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, you talked about how much your family means to you. And man, I got to say, it is beautiful hearing you talk about being a dad, about being a husband, you know, like your wife putting her life on hold and then you turning around and say, you know what? I want to I want to serve you. You know, yeah. what's what has been for you in those proudest moments as a father and as a husband? Man, I got to say, so I heard recently, right? My, my kids, they, on the summers, they go down to uh, their grandparents. We, both our grandparents, my, my family and my wife's family, are still in Texas, uh, about uh, two hours away from each other. So they split the summer up with them. Uh, and it was really cool to get some feedback from my mom and dad saying, hey, you know, your kids talk highly of you. Awesome. They're like, oh, man, you, uh, you know what I love the most about my dad is, you know, I know he's tired a lot, but he'll come home. And I'll be like, hey, you want to play football? And even though I can see he's really tired and exhausted or almost half asleep sometimes, Right on the couch, he's like, yep, let's do it. And, and, you know, and he goes out there and plays football with us or, well, you know what I mean? Or he's always doing projects with us or, or he plays the games with us. And, and just, yes. so man, hearing that and hearing some of that feedback was, was something important because I didn't think that they noticed those things. And you know, sometimes you don't think, you know, I'm like, man, they probably only ever see me when I get mad. 
You know, like, hey, yeah. why are you fighting with your sister? Why are you fighting with your brother? <laughs> but it's when you when you hear the echoes from somebody else saying, "Hey, your kids recognize your your positive sides, man." That that meant a lot to me, man. That made me feel proud of just who they are. Plus, when I hear the way they behave with other parents, they may not behave well with me and my wife. I don't know who they are when they're here, you know. But man, <laughs> I, but as long as they're acting right when they're with other people. And, yeah. uh, and they come back and I get that, hey, man, your kids are well behaved. Hey, they're so respectful. And I'm like, my, my kids? My, my kids. You, you sure it was mine? You, them? you know? So them when, I, when you get that, man, it makes you proud to know, hey, when they're here, they're comfortable, right? With their mom and dad. Of course, they're going to be there. Maybe they're truer selves, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to be more relaxed. But when they're out there, they know, hey, I know my P's and I got to, hey, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. No, ma'am, no, sir. Please thank you. You know, they're doing the right things, right? They're doing what we expect of them to be role models. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll highlight one more thing because it was important to me. My son, I, I told him the other day, uh, he's my oldest, my oldest son, Alex. And I said, uh, he's 13. I said, hey, you know, if you ever spend the night at someone's house, right? Parents, you know, just as we would do, right? If you had your friends here, you know, we're going to, your guests ain't going to pay for nothing. We're going to take them out, get them whatever they need. I was like, but never take more than what you require, right? Mm-hmm. Never, like, hey, we'll get you a taco. We'll mm-hmm. get you this, we'll get you whatever. I was like, you, don't, you know, you don't need that, right? Even though they're just, they're just being nice. You should know when to kind of cut that off and just be thankful and appreciative of what you have. Uh, and he did that. They took it to the fair and uh, they wanted to get more. And he's like, no, no, I got it. As a matter of fact, I got some of my own money. And uh, he used some of his own money because he gets chore money and all that kind of stuff, right? And he used that. And when I found that out, I replenished it right away. I said, hey, man, go ahead and check because he has a debit card I signed him up for. I was like, go ahead and check your account. Hey, me and your mom are proud of you, man. Thank you for making that that decision uh, that we expect of you. And hey, your money's back. You know what I mean? Yeah. So just moments like that, man. That, that just, you know, they get you. They get you right here. Yeah, but you're proud of the. They're, they're yeah, listening, well, even though you don't think they're yeah. listening. Sometimes, man, they're listening. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I hope if your son finds this podcast, he is he sees that his dad is loved, admired, and yeah. is a superhero to more than just oh, him. So, for sure, for sure. You know, we both know anime has a lot of say when it comes to growth, leadership, and perseverance. How do you think anime can inspire personal growth and professional development in others? Oh, man, that's a good question. Uh, well, like I said, we'll keep with the theme. We'll keep with the Dragon Ball Z theme, right? Okay. Um, think about it, right? And how many times, if anybody does watch anime that do watch Dragon Ball Z, has Goku hit what he thought was his peak, his, his final form, his final limit, right? And yet he, but he doesn't just stop it, right? What does he continue to do? He continues to train. Uh, he continues to push those boundaries. He continues to Vegeta, right? Him and Vegeta continue to fight and push those boundaries. And guess what? They break that barrier. That's what it constantly happens with them in the show. Is they constantly break barriers. Boom, new form, right? Yeah. Boom, break another barrier. Boom, new form. Even Freezer, right? Even the bad, yeah. the bad guy is like, oh, it's not even my final form yet, right? Um, there's constantly, <laughs> there's always something else. There's always yeah. another step to you. And I think that's so important when it comes to development because, man, Mike, you cannot just, you can't get complacent in your career. Just because you yeah. master a skill set or you master your section and you're like, man, I got this down, man, good to go. And then things yep. are just running smooth. Guess what? Complacency is the biggest enemy uh, to our military sometimes. And guess what? Your 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 section is going to fall apart. You got to continue to develop and challenge yourself. I know that we come from an old mindset, and I know you're going to know this. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right? We talk about this fix in my classroom yep. sometimes. Yep. But guess what? Yep. Just because it isn't broke doesn't mean it can't be improved. Yeah. Right? Doesn't it doesn't mean I'm rechanging the whole process. It just means I'm going to improve it. Right? Because there's, it's we're in a newer time. We're in a newer pro, in a newer mindset. You get these new ideas from people. That's what's so important about our classrooms, the way we do things, is because you get a huge mindset of different perspectives, different career fields, different mm-hmm. backgrounds, different cultures, and somebody's going to come up with an idea that inspires somebody else, and they're going to build off each other, and boom, guess what? Brand new, improved process that makes more sense for today's time. Yeah. Um, but it's constant development. It's not being complacent. It's not being comfortable in that space uh, and constantly challenging yourself and to, for that growth, right? That's what it's all about. So I'm here. So I'm an instructor now. I could have no, just been stuck in the military uh, maintenance life. That yeah, might you, not, probably. You're right. You're right. <laughs> yep. And that, that's true. And, and and because of that, you know, you see growth. And I was reading this uh, book. Um, I forgot. I think his name is uh, something sure or clear. James Clear. Um, it's called Atomic Habits. Yeah. Um, and man, this book is pretty amazing. So it's basically talking about making small incremental changes in your in your routine, in your really? habits, in your behavior. Right. You know, nothing big. You don't have to do this insurmountable, crazy, you know, prolific thing. Just yeah. small changes here and there can affect such uh, such in a big way where it affects your behavior. It affects how you do things, right? So I always, I thought that was, you know, uh, pretty interesting, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think I, for I most people's mindsets, it's easier when you do smaller things, right? When you start doing smaller yeah. things to grow, it's easy. My bad. Yeah. So. No, 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 it's fine. No, you ain't coming, y'all. You're fine. No, uh, you know, it just makes me think. It just, that's all. That's all. And, you know, 
Is is there an obstacle or moment in your career that you felt like you really shifted things for you that pushed you in new directions that you didn't expect? That's a good question, too. Man, you're getting the hard questions today. Uh, hey, got to dig deep. I would say one moment, there, there's, there's a different moment than I, I was previously thinking, but something that does kind of remind me sometimes is how I first handled my first female troop, right? Because it, before it was, uh, to me, it was just like, all right, yeah, all right, this is what I expect you to do, do this and that. Uh, and it was, for, at the time, it seemed easy, right? Mm-hmm. So I got my first female troop and I didn't realize the different situations that would occur and the challenges that she would have compared to, to her male counterparts. And I, and I never put myself in that mindset. I didn't never think to open my mind to that kind of perspective. Right. Because I was just like, ah, I'm just here to do my maintenance job. It's with press. Uh, so that actually helped me grow a little bit more where I started to put myself in other people's shoes a little bit more. And I started saying, OK, now let me let me make decisions based on what I know more about people now. And what, I, what I know more about what their situation may be versus just what I think is the easiest decision. And I think that that small thing right there immediately started changing my path in my career. to just like I said, being more open minded individual uh, to be more open to other people's perspectives and ideas. Uh, without just having to overbear and just be just, hey, just do what I say, uh, not what I do type leader or whatever it may have been back yeah. in the day. So that, that's one moment I can think of. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's crazy because um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm currently going through as a, as a flight chief um, as well, is that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to transition my tech sergeants into having a growth mindset. Because okay. um, before I got there, you know, it's, you know, you know, maintenance, you know, either you're, you're, you're high on a horse or you're down with the pigs. And so, you know, right now I will say I'll, I'll, there are individuals in my flight that, like you said, they come, they come to work and they dial it in. And, I, and I'm trying to challenge them not to dial it in. You know, they say, I don't care about getting promoted, sir. I, I'm like, yes, you do. Because every time promotion listings come out, you start getting happy. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, you didn't do anything to get promoted. And they're like, well, I'm not going to play the Air Force's game. And I said, yeah. well, I said, if you don't play the game, you take your ball and go home. Guess what? You get left out. And I said, mm-hmm. let's just say, you know, for the sake of argument, you say it's a game. I don't really believe it's a game. I said, think about it. Air Force is going to pay you to go to school. They're going to pay for all your schooling. They're paying for that. I said, then they're going to give you time to go volunteer in the community, in the squadron, and to network and grow with people. I said, and then they're going to want to pay you to get promoted and do uh, and do better with yourself. I said, so is that playing a game? I said, if that's so, then the game seems kind of rigged in your favor. Yeah. You know, but they're like, well, you know, I just want to take care of my guys. And I said, well, yeah. well what? I said, well, if, I said, let's, let's, I said, let's follow that premise. You want to take care of your guys. I get it. Cool. I said, I was the same way. I said, you being a tech sergeant, wouldn't you have more resources as a master? You as a master, wouldn't you have more resources as a senior? When you can you network and connect with and open doors for your your troops a lot more as this and that, and they started yeah. thinking they're like yeah yeah, yeah. Like, I wait man yeah I can't so, I said, like so, you got a bunch of disgruntled Michael Scotts in your uh, you section know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was my I, old mindset I would call them Michael Scotts but it is <laughs> disgruntled people so with that you know you 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 got to deal with that and and I'm trying to motivate but I, I'm I feel like I'm chipping away you know. Nine yeah. months later, they're starting to understand what I'm trying to do. I'm chipping away at them and slowly, you know, uh, and it's hard because, you know, I feel like, I feel like I got to go like balls to the wall and be extra, you know, in yeah. a lot of ways to try to motivate and not just motivate, inspire and really try to let them know I have their back. I think yeah. that's the biggest thing is that they usually leadership kind of burns them and they're like, mm-hmm. oh, man, you know, I'm tired of this Air Force stuff. And it's not yeah. tired of the Air Force. They're just tired of the type of leadership they have, right? And then I come in and I'm like, hey, man, we can do this. Hey, man, let's, go, let's do this. And they're like, hey, you're in the wrong career field, man. What you doing over here in maintenance, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they're like, mm, what, I, what I can I suggest to you, Mike, you this know? is something that, that I've seen back in my day that I, that I found that worked really good is I used to want to, when I wanted to push people, when I wanted them to be their best, right? And I was like, I literally am here for you to be the best version of you. Sometimes I wasn't the right person for that individual to do that. Mm. And so what I found out is I was like, I started looking at who better matches who that person is. That's that rank above that I can maybe connect them. with. And so I started doing that. So I was like, Hey, do you mind if you have a time frame? Well, can you maybe, if you have an hour or something, can I set up a meeting with you and this individual and I have that conversation? And when I started doing stuff like that, I saw a huge growth from that individual. I'm like, Hey man, thank wow. you for letting me talk to that person, man. He, he actually, me and him almost alike. 
You know, it was crazy to hear what his story and what he came from and, and see what he can do, man. I'm motivated. Like, I'm ready to get it, you know, get after it now. And it was, it was yeah. cool to see. Uh, that I'm not going to say it's always going to work, but it is something that I did see that did work, right? It's fine. Yeah. Like, me trying to fit that mold, I, I wasn't the right, if you, we can want to go with an analogy, I wasn't the right jigsaw piece to that puzzle, right? Yeah. I, I wanted to be that person, and I, I wanted it so bad. I was like, let me develop you. And, you know, and they're like, nah. But I found that person that did match who what they were looking for, and man, I got to see some growth. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, and that's the goal, right? The goal yeah. was just to get that person to be developed uh, and take control of their career, man. And finding that right person for them really, I saw really worked out really well. For them. So just a gist. Mm-hmm. Okay. And now I will take, I will take that suggestion. I'll write it down uh, as soon as I can. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm going to take that. I'm already thinking of one good person. I know that probably can connect with this tech sergeant that I'm, I'm trying to mentor. So yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So this is a fun question, you know, um, okay. uh, if you could, if you had to make your Mount Rushmore of anime characters, you know, basically your top four, who's making the cut and why? Really good. And you're always asking me good questions today. Well, clearly yeah. we already talked about, you know, Goku and Vegeta. I'm going to put Goku and Vegeta too, man. I, I know most people don't like Dragon Balls. You know more, man. So but one and two. Are, one and two. They're, they're just, they're just my, my guiding souls. I, I also put Kirito from uh, Sword Art Online. First season, Ooh. right? Uh, yeah. Sword Art Online, man, is one of, my, one of my favorite episodes. But dude had a lot of information and... Uh, when you think about what he was, right? He was a uh, beta tester, right? But he was the best yeah. beta tester for that game. When they get stuck in the game now, uh, instead of just using that to advantage to take over and be the biggest enemy, yeah, he plays solo. He's like the solo character, but he does it for a purpose because he didn't want nobody else to get hurt. Uh, but he mm. took the information, you know, that he had to to make the world better, try to push and, and free everybody. I thought that was really cool. It's one of my favorite animes. Uh, yeah, I don't know how, you know, but hey, man, I got like some of the stuff tattooed. It's just one hey. of my favorites, man. It's just okay, okay, uh, okay. I, I used to love video games. My kids have all my video games now. Every kid has one of my old consoles, <laughs> so I don't really play it too much anymore, anyway. But it, it was one of my it's favorite passions back in the day. But I had a video game too. I yeah, mean, um, that, yeah. that's well, kind of hard, right? For a minute there, I used to hold it down, but yeah, now now my now my eyesight's like blurring, my, and the controls are tinier, and I'm like, hey man, this, my, my hands are cramping, man. This ain't shit. <laughs> so it's a little harder. You're right. You're right. So that'd be my three, and then I say, hey, for that fourth one, man, you know what? I'm gonna put Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon, believe it or not, people don't know this, but Sailor Moon's one of the strongest characters out there. You know, they, they used to break universes when, when they used to have some fights and stuff. So, and Sailor hey, Moon, I used to watch true. it, man. I used to watch it back in the day, watch it, you know, do it changes, you know, it was what, all we had on the one channel on TV back in our dinosaur days, right? It kids do not know the struggle that we had. Yeah. yeah. And you, you know, know what? I, put, I used to like Sailor Moon, but I love tux, uh, Tuxedo Mask. Oh, tuxedo yeah. Mask was the man. He used to call through, man. <laughs> So yeah, I put those yeah. four, man. Those would be those would be my I'd be Goku, Vegeta, uh, Kirito, and then I uh, yeah, I throw Sailor Moon on it. Okay, heck yeah, heck yeah. She might want to yeah. be the top one though, because she's probably the stronger one out of all of them. And yeah. That is true. That is true. Well, man, it's been an honor having you here on the show. You know, we got some great gems today. And if you like the show, hey, you know, look out. We might be doing this again, you know. But, you know, this is just a live interview for the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Michael J. Scott. Man, man, if you got kind. anything going on and you want to say something before we close, the floor is yours, man. Yeah. Uh, so one thing I'll just share that, I, and I share this when when I'm able to teach, uh, I always tell my team, hey, transparency is one of the biggest deals you can be as a leader, right? Uh, it's okay to not be at 100% every day. I tell this, I tell them all the time, I'm like, uh, how many times are you expected to be at 100%? This is not real. You can't do that. It's not, it's not, it's not manageable, right? It's not healthy for your lifestyle. Um, so what I would tell anybody out there listening is just, Hey, be transparent with your team. If you're coming in at a 45%, that's okay. Let them know you're at a 45%, right? Just say, Hey team, I'm at 45 today. I'm going to do my best to bump those numbers up as we go through it. Hope I don't get any lower. Uh, but just know, man, I just got some things going on. Please be there for being my support system. Uh, and let's press, right? And it's okay when you just give that full 45, you get, right? That's okay. I think people just need to understand that you don't always have to be operating at hundred percent all the time. It's unmanageable. It's not realistic. You can't do it. Because then when you get home, guess what? Your family or whoever, they're getting nothing from you. They're getting a negative percent. And that's a person you don't want them to see. So, uh, man, just take it a day at a day at a time. Utilize the resource the Air Force has. Anybody out there ever needs resources, uh, please get connect with me. Or maybe you can connect with Sergeant Yubi here. But uh, use the resources the Air Force and military has provided for you. Because, you know, you get kind of used by the Air Force and the military. Use the resources they're providing you as well uh, to, to grow and develop yourselves through your career. You know, and be ready to, to retire. Like myself yeah. in two years. Yeah. But no, that's all well, I got, that, man. I just I'm just blessed to be here and I'm grateful and uh truly appreciative. So thank thank you for having me on the on the on the show, man. Okay. Well that 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 is what it is, y'all. 
Hey, this is in Yoku Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Yervy, and it's been another one. Peace. Peace.